One of those days, he went to buy akara, you know, beans ball, beans cake, right? Okay. And um, the paper they used in wrapping it had a write-up from someone that wrote that particular page or publication that, that period. And he said, do not complain about your present. Think about the seed you will sow for your future. And that was the only thing he could see because every other part was turned out. And he went home. He, he was supposed to throw it away, but he was thinking about that thing. And he went, by the time he got to his house, he realized that where he is today is a product of the seed he has sown before now. So he now said, if this paper is correct, it means he can change the future that he sees. And from that moment, he told himself, what is the thing I actually want to become? What, who do I want to become? And he wrote it down. And he said, what will it take to get there? And he wrote it down. And from that day, he began to plant seed of investing in his mind, investing in that dream. And before a couple of years, I think about five, ten years later, he became one of the CEOs in Lagos and well known for his fabric company. Hallelujah. Because why? He discovered a very simple secret that God gave a long time ago. Seed time and harvest will never cease. So whether we are doing something or not, we're saying something or not, we're going somewhere or not, we are sowing a seed. And so today we're looking at the seeds of fruitfulness. And quickly, I want to recap the, the meaning of fruitfulness that was given to us by God Simon on the first day of this month. And he said, fruitfulness is the capacity or ability to produce an intended or expected satisfactory result or outcome. Hallelujah. Fruitfulness is the capacity or ability to produce an intended or expected satisfactory result outcome so today we i know throughout this month we've been hearing of fruitfulness 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 now let's let's see a few thoughts of god about fruitfulness god's thoughts about fruitfulness in genesis chapter 1 verse 28 we're going to begin from there king james version he said can we read it together one to go and god blessed them and he said to them be and what and what and what and have dominion over the fish of the sea yes and what yes that means in god's mind while he was creating you and i in his thoughts naturally you should produce fruit uh, i mean you should move from one level to another uh, you should be able to bring something that adds value to mankind. Hello? Amen? So that, that is the way he's, he's thinking when he's seeing you and I. He's not thinking stagnancy. He's not thinking manage what's around. No, he's thinking make it double. All right? <laughs> Does that make sense? He's thinking replicate it. He's thinking bring up something new. All right? Okay. So that, that's his mind. Let's look at John chapter 15, verse 8. This is an outstanding statement. He said, Jesus was speaking here. He said, this is to my father's what? That what? Now, that means I, I can't show the glory of God by talking about it alone. One of the ways I should show the glory of God is by what? Very much fruit. That means in God's thoughts, you are living to produce fruit. I am living to produce something. And that is fruitfulness. So from Genesis, if, if you read, the, the Bible is amazing. If you read the book of Genesis down to Revelation, you're going to see that every time God visits his people, the very first fruit is fruitfulness. They begin to multiply in their flock. They begin to multiply in their crops. You know, if they were farmers, are we getting this? Uh, or they begin to multiply in souls. And during the apostles' time, God visits a, a particular city. And before you know it, everybody is coming to Jesus. So that means, in God's thoughts, if you want to know, am I in the presence of God or not? Look at your life. I, I will look at my life. Am I fruitful? 
And fruitfulness is in different perspectives. The very first fruit God wants us to, to I, I need us to get this. The, the very first fruit God wants to show forth in our lives is the fruit of the Spirit of God. A godly character. So that all men will see it and give glory to God. Amen. So, let's look at this next slide. He said, one of the evidences of God's presence and visitation upon life, upon the life of a man, his family, endeavor, land, ministry, character, ideas, and solution production is what? Fruitfulness. Fruitfulness. So when you say God is actually in this house, God is actually in this family, you will see that that family always produces fruits. Now, it may not actually have to be with money, primarily, but you see fruits of love. Are we getting it? We see fruits of forbearance. Each, they are able to be patient with each other. You see fruits of long-suffering. Are we getting this? So, when you see the family, you just admire them. They may not have all the money in the world, but they just have this glory around them because they are fruitful. And that is, that is a product of the presence of God in their lives. Amen. When we look at what we do, when you know that God is in what you do, no matter the challenge or the location you are in, God always calls you to succeed. Now, in every business, there are ups and downs, true or false. But even when it looks, in quotes, it's down, you have a hope. And so others are closing up. You keep moving. Because God is with you, so you can't die in the desert. He's taking you to the promised land. So you just, you just understand that in God's thoughts, I am supposed to be fruitful. And the product of God's presence in that my business is that I will always produce fruit. Somebody declare to yourself, as long as God is with me. It doesn't matter what's happening around me. I will produce fruit. Woo, hallelujah. We will produce fruit. We can see that in the lives of Job. You know, it, the Bible says that he was one of the most fruitful men in the East at his, in his time. We saw Daniel that during his time he was relevant. For four um, different times, four different kings came to the, the, the land of Babylon. Daniel was relevant because the presence of God was with him. So he was constantly fruitful with ideas. He was constantly fruitful with solution. Now take note, if, if you see the options, there will see ideas. Um, one of the things the Holy Spirit wants to give to us, you know, when, when we go and we pray, is that he gives you ideas. Okay? Um, God doesn't give money. He gives you idea to make money. That is the power. So the power is actually the idea. Amen? It gives you the enablement. So even if there's challenge, somehow you just continue to succeed in making the money. It may not be overnight, but you, you're in a consistent growth. Amen? So God gives ideas. And one of the product, products of his presence is fruitfulness in ideas. And also, fruitfulness in proffering solution. So the very first thing, your immediate challenges. That's why... Paul was teaching and he said something outstanding. You do not need any other person to teach you, but the Holy Spirit that is in you will teach you everything. It means when I face a challenge, the Holy Spirit is able to produce fruit of solutions in my mind, in my heart. Hallelujah. And I'm able to go through the challenge. So now there are different ways he does it. Either he inspires you or he brings you to church. As you come to church, God's servant is ministering, the solution comes. Amen. So you see, it's, it's fruitfulness all the way with Jesus. First of all, with our character, with who we are, before it begins to manifest on the outside. Hallelujah. But let's take note of this next slide. He said, however, for every fruit, there is the sacrifice of planting. Okay. Um, if we don't plant, we shouldn't expect harvest yes so you can almost predict what's going to happen so if i look at my life and there are some things i want to see in my life i need to plant the seeds for it so we must understand that every fruit 
um, to begin its fruitfulness, there's a sacrifice of planting and understanding of seasons. Amen. Um, I'm going to explain this understanding of seasons. You know, there are some trees that are called annual crops. True or false? And there are some trees that are by annual crops, right? Then there are some trees that takes more than two, three years to grow, right? So let's say I'm an annual crop. And my friend, Mr. B, is a banana crop. So just because in my own season, I started growing, growing so fast. My friend looks at himself and be like, ah, what is wrong with me? I'm not even going anywhere. Amen? Someone was saying today that you go on social media, maybe you go like LinkedIn, and the moment you enter your profile and everything, they, they connect you with some person that are connected to your field, and you see someone younger than you are, has MSc, has PhD, has this, has this, has this. Then you now ask yourself, where am I in this world? Are you getting it? So because this person actually planted the seed in a particular time. And this is his season. It doesn't mean that you are a failure. It only means it is possible. Are we getting this? It means my own season will still come. So he may be annual and I may be biannual. So where he's blossoming now, by the time he is done, now they're my own form starts. Are we getting it? So I'm not really bothered about this someone is doing. I used to be really, really bothered about that. Like I, I could actually see a minister, a young minister like me doing so well. Maybe some of them when I watch them in Lagos and do and I will be feeling so bad. Like, come on. Are we getting this? But everybody has their season. Are we getting this? So and in your own season, you will shine. Somebody say, in my season, my season. I will produce fruit. Let's look at what the Bible says. Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse uh, 3, verse 1a in the Amplified Version. It said, There is a season, a time appointed for everything. Your time will come. Amen. Let's look at the message version of this same um, Bible verse. It said, There's an opportune time to do things, a right time for everything on earth. So, even if we're discussing fruitfulness, and people are going to be coming out from next Sunday giving their testimonies of fruitfulness. And it may look like yours is not coming soon. Relax. There is a particular story I heard about a bamboo tree in the Asian continent that takes a very long time to come out of the ground. So you can plant it for the next 10 years. It's still inside the ground. And every other tree is coming out. But after I think about 10, 20 years, by the time it starts coming out, that's how it begins to grow and begins to blossom. By that time, those other trees will become obsolete. He is now the reigning one. Your time will come. Amen. Now, today we're looking at seeds of fruitfulness. Somebody say seeds of fruitfulness. Seeds of fruitfulness. Let's look at the meaning of a seed. Uh, with the dictionary meaning, let's look at what a seed means. A seed is a grain of plants used for sowing. Like we all know, mango seed, orange seed, pear seed, you know, uh, a seed is uh, a grain from a plant used for sowing. And this other meaning says that it is a source of development or growth. A seed is a source of development or growth. It means if I'm going to grow into so and so, what is the seed I am planting now to achieve it? So I want to be a master degree holder in a particular line of discipline. I have to sow the seed of, first of all, knowing the subject that I need to take it for SSE. Are we getting this? Then go to school and put my heart into what I'm studying. And after I'm done with my BSc, go for service and go for the master degree. Are we getting it? So in all this time, I've been planting seeds of paying school fees, reading books, doing all nights. I've been sowing those seeds. So at the end of the day, I actually come out with a product of growth and development. Hallelujah. Now let's look at um, seeds, another definition. You say seeds are timely actions that necessitate a life 
or an endeavor that produces intended results or outcome successfully. I'm going to explain this, this particular definition. Are we together? It says, seeds are timely actions. Um, we understand times and seasons. So, in the rainy season, what do we plant? Can, can we mention some of the seeds we plant during the rainy season? What? Corn. Okay, we plant corn. Now, imagine during dry season, you go and plant corn. Will it work? Because it's not timely. So, seeds are actually timely actions. So, it's not just about the seed itself. Now, we are looking at seed as an action, as something you do, as something you invest in. Timely, at the right time. Some of us are 15. What are the seeds we are sowing at 15? Some of us are 23. What are the seeds we are sowing at 23? There are seeds that should be sown at 23. Some of us are married. What are the seeds we are sowing for a successful marriage in the future? Because it is called an institution. So we keep learning, we keep growing together, we keep achieving more things. So if we're going to go more and be fruitful, what are the uh, seeds we are sowing as a couple for a better family? Are we getting this? Uh, okay, I'm not going to expand it on that because I'm not married yet. Amen? Okay, so um, we're looking at seeds of fruitfulness. So seeds are timely actions. Can you give me my slide, please? Seeds are timely actions that necessitate a life or an endeavor that produces intended results or outcome. Now, we become fruitful first by identifying our seeds. We become fruitful by identifying our seeds. Now, um, this is a goal. And I'm playing football. And the aim is to hit that goal. I will know exactly the direction to face. True or false? Now, imagine there is no goal. <laughs> I will be playing anyhow, right? That's exactly what this definition means. If I am going to identify where I'm going to be fruitful, I need to identify first the seed I'm going to sow. If there are some things that are not right in my life, I need to identify the seed that is producing that thing. Because those things are only fruits of a seed. Amen. So if I don't like the state I'm in, I want to go to the next state, what are the seeds I need to identify and sow so that I become a better person, so that I become a better entrepreneur, so that I become a better father? Let's look at Genesis chapter 1 verse 28. He said, and God blessed them, and God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply. God cannot tell you to become something he has not given you the ability to, to be. It means if God has blessed us from the beginning to be fruitful and multiply, we have the seeds to be able to, be pro to, to, be able to produce fruits. We have the seed inside of us to be able to produce what he desires of us. Amen. Somebody touch yourself and say, I have what it takes to produce fruit in my career, in my ministry, in my family. I have what it takes. Amen. Now, what are these seeds according to the context of our discussion today? Please, I want us to pay rapt attention to this word and it's going to bless us in Jesus name. Now, the number one seed we are going to identify today is the word of God. The word of God. Everything is in the word of God. Everything that pertains to life and godliness is in the word of God. The seed that we need to plant into our lives to achieve the desired result that God has ordained us to achieve from the beginning of the world is in the word of God. Let's look at Luke chapter 8 verse 11. Jesus, Jesus speaking personally. He said, 
this is the meaning of the parable. This is the parable of the sower. And he said, the seed is the word of God. And we understand in John chapter 1 verse 1 that in the beginning was the word. Take note. And the word was with and the word was. Now imagine you keep sowing the seed of God into your life every day. What will you become? Now, let's just picture it. You go every day energized. You go every day motivated because you carry God. The seed of God is in you. The Bible says we overcome not because we are strong, but because he is strong and his word in us gives us victory. We succeed by the word of God. Everything is in the word of God, brothers and sisters. Healing is in the word of God. See, you're finding it difficult to pray. Do you know where the solution is? It's not in trying to pray. It's in going to the word of God. You begin to sow seeds of the word of God into yourself. There is no way you can be sowing seeds of God into you and you can't talk to the same God. So naturally, prayerlessness walks away because now you are in connection with your father. So you can just say, ah, father, I've not been able to pray for a long time, but I'm glad I'm, I'm able to talk to you now. If you're going through anything in your life, the solution is in the word of God. Many years ago, there was someone amongst us uh, uh, that was very, very sick. And they couldn't understand what kind of sickness it is. And the bishop was called to the case. Hallelujah. And, and, and the bishop walked in to see her. And he told her a lot of things. And one of the things he told her was that, this is what you're going to do to take away this sickness. Go and soak yourself in the word of God. He never told her to pray. No, he didn't tell her to pray. He said, go and spend time with the word of God. And she picked it up. As frail and as weak as she is, she continually meditated upon the word of God. And the Bible says that we have been healed by the word of God. The word of God brings healing. See, I was born... Seven months old, baby. Is that what they call premature? <laughs> Seven months old. And according to my auntie, my mom couldn't tell me. I don't know why. My auntie said that they, the doctors were frustrated because they don't understand why the baby wasn't even responding to anything. He wasn't dying, wasn't living. So they said they should go home. Then after nine months, every other part of the body was formed, but the brains, the, the skull wasn't formed. So they were scared that the baby was going to die. Then a man of God from Assemblies of God came and told my mom that this son is going to serve God. That's the reason why he's going through what he's going through. And after a while, I was whole. I grew up every month falling sick. Every month falling sick. Every month falling sick. When I got to JSS3, by 4, 4 a.m. every morning, my parents have to come to my room. I was constantly in pain by 4 o'clock from JSS 3 to 200 level in the school. But then, <laughs> I understood that my healing is in the word of God. And I began to spend a lot of time when I heard the testimony of the bishop. And I began to study God's word. One night I was studying the word of God and the pain came up again at it was about 4 o'clock in the morning. And the pain came up and I said, Lord, whatever this is, I heard the, I am going to study your word. I can't remember the last time I felt sick. Monthly. Monthly. I grew up with a lot of bad esteem. I had low self-esteem and different things around me. I, I, I didn't know that the reason why I was exhibiting some bad attitude was because of a lot of fight within me. Coming to this branch, every word of God I received and the love of God shown to me by God's servant constantly changed me. 
The word of God is powerful. Do not live any of your day without God's word. If God can change anybody, he will change that person through his word. There is nothing bigger than God. That means there is nothing bigger than the word of God. You have a challenging situation, look for the word of God and soak yourself inside. It may take 10 months, but the word of God will surely come true. The seed of the word of God. I can tell you how the servant of God spends so much time meditating on, on, on the word of God every single day and every single night. And people are wondering, how is he able to produce fruit? Jesus Christ said it. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you produce fruit. So his fruit will be because of the word of God. So let us stay in the word of God. And what does the Bible, what does the devil fight us with? Distractions. Why? So that we don't stay in the word of God. Can I tell us something? This is going to be a shocker. You don't need to even understand most of the time. The Bible never said if you understand all the time. It's just a meditate upon the word of God day and night and observe to do everything that's within. Then you'll make your way prosperous. And will, whether you understand or not, stay in the word of God. Simple instruction. Obedience is better than what? Chicken now. Because some of us feel discouraged because I'm not understanding. You don't need to understand. The word that I speak to you are spirits and they are alive. They don't talk to your mortal mind. They don't talk to your physical mind. They speak to your spirit. So every day when I pick up the word of God and I'm, and I'm meditating on God's word, even if I don't understand and if the devil is trying to bring different things into my mind, I'm not bothered because I'm sowing the seed of the word of God into my life. Hallelujah. The next seed we're going to identify is investment on and off our potentials. Matthew chapter 5, chapter 25, verse 15 to 16. Can we read together, please? Matthew chapter 25. Verse 15 to 16. Let's read it together. One to go. To one, he gave five bags of gold. To another, he gave two bags. And to another, he gave one bag. Each according to his ability. To every one of us, God has given us an ability or abilities. Amen. So, we must invest in that ability. That is one of the seeds we must, we, must, we must have and identify. What is my, the ability that God has given to me? Then how can I improve on this ability? So what we need to do is to continually invest in that ability. How? Through what? Knowledge. Knowledge is one of the ways we refine the ability that God has given to us. Amen. Knowledge. Somebody say knowledge. knowledge. Yes. Daniel was relevant because he had an ability to actually... Um, interpret dreams he was able to understand times because he read a lot so he was using his ability helped with knowledge to add value some of us have more than one talent here what are we using it for now our talents are grouped into three for um, people that are multi-talented like I am it's grouped into three they are the primary abilities that God has given to you that must take most of your time and you prayerfully actually identify your primary ability the second one is the secondary ability the secondary ability is the one you use in supporting the primary ability okay then the last one is just something you do when you're free or when you're not free so whether you do it or not you don't lose anything so for most of us that are multi-talented or we have several abilities, you must be able to put your abilities into priorities, categorize them, and make sure that we invest in them. And we can see from this slide that it's investment on and off. So what we have, we must invest it in someone or in something or in an organization, in a system. Amen. 
So I can't be in an office and I see that there are some things I can do that is outside my you know, job description and I have the free will to or the, uh, the, the license to do it and I don't do it. I'm not investing what I have. A lot of persons climbed um, the ladder of success because they were doing something that the boss was only noticing. Whenever this lady, this secretary comes to work, she will not only clean her place, she will go to, to, go to my office, she will go to the office of every other person and clean their offices. And after that, they, she always has this ability to put on the systems, even if she doesn't know how to operate it. So somehow, over time, when they are looking for someone they can trust in a particular position, you know, in future, that seed that she has sown of her ability will not speak for her. Please, let's bring this girl here. I think she can do this thing. That's why a lot of people, their lives have changed because of the seed they sow. So with the ability and the potential that God has given to us, let's endeavor to invest it rightly. Hallelujah. The next seed we are identifying is the wise investment of our time. God's servant teaching last year said that we cannot save time. It's not possible to save time. You want to keep time. I'll keep this time to myself. No. But you actually learn to manage time. Amen. Amen. We learn to manage time. And a wise investment of our time is also a product of what we will see in the nearest future. So instead of spending all the time on social media, I decide to invest my time on myself or on the word of God. What will happen is that in a few years' time, I will become a better person or a stronger Christian. True or false? But if I now begin to spend my time on other things, talking to my friends, going out and different things, when is the time to actually sow those times into studying, sow those times into watching our families, sow those times into maybe if you're married, your spouse, you claim to be always busy, then when you come back, you're watching TV, you just want to, no, you cannot grow a relationship that way. So one of the ways that I observe that if a, a, a relationship is about to crash is the cut off of communication you're not so busy so we must be able to prioritize our time and invest our time wisely on our children Pana Paul is one of the greatest music, uh, musicians in Nigeria of all times and, and he owes his whole success to his father he said from the age of four his father will wake him up every day by three o'clock and begin to mentor him every day he never ceased except he went to school and the moment he came back, the father would start teaching him. At the age of eight, the father introduced him to servant, to servant, to stewardship, serving people. And after that mentoring for that age, by nine, when he was nine years old, he was serving about nine masters that were soldiers. His father's salary at that time was 25 pounds. From serving nine soldiers, he was receiving 20 pounds. As at nine years. Before he was 18, he has built his house. Before he was 18, he has bought his first car. Mentorship. Why? The father decided to invest time rightly on him. And today he's a product of excellence. He has up to four PhD or three PhDs in music alone. How did he do it? <laughs> Amen. So let's learn to wisely invest our time. The next seed we're identifying is seeds of our services to God and to man. When we serve God, we are sowing seeds. I'll repeat it. When we serve God, we are sowing seeds. And like God's servant have taught us over time, coming to church is not serving God. In fact, coming to church is being, is being served by God. God is serving you, amen, amen, by you coming to church. But how do I serve God? I serve God with the way I live. Amen. I serve God by keeping his word in the secret and in the open. I serve God by doing the deeds of the word of God. 
And also, we must sow the seed of serving people. Amen. Amen. If we look at the motivational speakers and a lot of things happening around us, even on the internet, you will see that a lot of people prioritize entrepreneurship. It's perfect. It's awesome. But they never mention as much as they emphasize you standing on your own as serving others. That is why um, someone will work for a while and before you know it, he has not finished his service, he wants to go and be his own boss. There is always a place of serving someone. Serve your father, serve your mother, serve your brothers. Amen. Amen. Serve your husband, serve your wife. And I've learned that one of the secrets of a successful marriage is the two spouses able to serve each other selflessly. Amen. Amen. So we must learn to serve one another, not just in church, but outside the church. Hallelujah. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10 said, Every believer has received grace gifts. So, so use them to serve one another. So whatever you can do for someone to add value to someone, please, let's use it to save someone. Amen. Amen. Colossians chapter 3, verse um, verse 23 to 24. It said, whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord. Whatever you do, it is inside church. So when I do my job very well, I'm serving the Lord. Amen. Must serve the Lord. It's a seed we are sowing. Let's take note of this. It was given by God's servant. He said, everything exists to serve. And to serve a purpose. We exist to actually serve. I exist to serve you. You exist to serve me. That is how the world goes round. So the driver exists to serve the passengers. The sellers exist to, se- to, to serve the customers. So whatever ability or opportunity God has given to us, we must use it to serve. Whatever is not serving does not exist. Let's look at Matthew chapter 5 verse 13. This is outstanding. It's amazing that the word of God said this. Matthew 5, verse 13. This is a read version. Let's read it together. I said, you are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its taste, it cannot be made salty again. Salt is useless if it loses its salty taste. That means I am only as useful as the value I add. Hmm. The moment I stop adding value, I'm useless. So let's ask ourselves, what is the value I'm adding to my son other than just preparing him from school and driving him away because of his wahala? You know, they disturb a lot. I say son because I have all brothers. We know how we give our mom, my mom problem. Amen? So she, she's always happy when we are going away. Hmm? The one will come back is first of all, you do this, you do this. I used to wonder why she do I thought it's discipline. Oh, I have a mother that disciplines us. So that's awesome. I don't know. Say so she's trying to just save herself from problem. As you are doing this one, you won't have chance to disturb me. So you do this one, you do this one, you do this one. You know, are we getting this? So, so apart from that, what is the value we are adding to our sons? Are we preparing him for the future that he sees? What is the value we are adding to our sisters, our brothers, to our organization? Because that's where our saltiness lies. Amen. 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 Are we blessed? Okay. Let's go to the next slide, please. The next slide. Thank you. The next seed we are talking about is the seed of opportunities and possibilities. Yes, this is where the Walkings of the Holy Spirit is primary. You may just walk into somewhere and somebody is just discussing one business, you know, he's just talking about a business to someone. 
and the Holy Spirit will just tell you, involve yourself in that discussion. Amen. So in your mind, you'll be like, no, no I, I don't try to, I don't involve myself. Even the Bible says everybody should mind its own business. Man, you will just miss the opportunity. Are we getting this? So we need to be able to maximize opportunities. You know, because God is not going to come by himself and give you that open door. He's going to use someone. He's going to throw it in a newspaper. He's going to throw it as an advert on social media. Are we getting this? He's going to drop it as an idea. He's going to put it in someone that is doing it already. So it's just an opportunity. So the person may just may be doing his own and you've been seeing him or seeing her and nothing just told you to do anything. But there will be just this opportunity. And because you're working with God and the spirit of discernment is at work in you, the Holy Spirit will just lead you. Why don't you just buy a gift and send it to that guy? It doesn't make sense. Why should I buy a gift and just send to... I mean, I know this guy. This guy is even richer than I am. Are we getting it? But unfortunately, that is an opportunity. So because I'm responding to the Holy Spirit, I buy the gift and I say, bro, how far now? I just, I just, I just buy this can give you. And after doing it, the guy said, wow. And you leave. He starts thinking, what can I do for this guy? Because there's something about, you know, you know they, they want to show, replicate that you know, kind of gesture. And all of a sudden, that thing you are looking for, they will give it to you. Just like that. So we must be open to opportunities. That, that is one of the seeds that we get. We must identify. Is there a seed of opportunity in this business I'm doing? Where is this business taking me to? This thing I'm doing, what, what, is, what is the future behind it? Amen. Amen. This investment I'm able to make, what, what is the future behind it? So we must be able to identify, okay, maybe this seed is not for me. Or this seed is for me. So let's look at Colossians 4 verse 5. What did he say? Be wise in the way you act towards outsiders. Make the most of every opportunities. Now I ask the Holy Spirit, why did he have to bring outsiders before opportunities he now said because our prosperity is in others it's not in us it's in others <laughs> so my ability to move pastor said it you want to succeed it, it greatly depends on your ability to work with others so your ability to make the most of every opportunity you get with people actually decides how successful we become the next slide please the seed of our words Somebody say my words. Look at what Proverbs chapter 18 verse 21 says. It said, your tongue has the power of life and death. And those who love it will eat its fruit. It means every word that comes out of my mouth is a seed. And will produce a fruit. What is the seed I'm sowing into my life? Ah, I just tire. Ah, voila for everybody you know, that's the reigning language right now, Wala. Any small thing, if you're in the bus, Wala. Wala for no get cell phone. Wala for no, everything, Wala. So we're not doing them to start saying Wala. Me, I'm repeating now because I've started saying Wala too. <laughs> are we getting it? So we must mind the seed we are sowing with our words. Death and life is in the power of the tongue. That means I'll be given the power to change my life, to inspire my life. So I wake up in the morning and I tell myself, oh boy, I'm healed, I'm prosperous, I'm going somewhere in my life. I cannot fail. Are you getting it? Oh, my son is not doing, my son will do well. He must do well. He doesn't have a choice. I just sowed life into him. He must do well. The Bible said there's power in your tongue. So let's use it very well. It's a seed. So therefore, if there's anything that is not in our lives tonight, we are going to uproot it with the power of our words. Because the Bible said that whatsoever is not planted by my heavenly father shall be what? You put it. So I've given you authority. Whatever you bind on this, I'll be bound in heaven. Your tongue. Whatever you loose here on this, I'll be loose in heaven. Your tongue. Amen. Amen. Let's look at the next seed. The seed of our actions and inactions. This is very profound. What we are doing. And what we are not doing. You cannot be doing anything and expect something at the end of the day. So you're not doing something is actually a seed of producing nothingness. So you will have a bunch of nothingness to walk into. Amen? So when we don't do anything and we're expecting everything, we are thieves. <laughs> Amen? We're not doing anything, but we are expecting everything. We are not thieves. But 
the actions I'm taking right now, can I, can I, can, can we make it a little bit personal? How am I living my life in the secret and in the open? Those are actions, true or false. And they are seeds. What is it going to produce? What is it going to produce? So we must mind our actions. In Psalm, I'm not going to go through all of this. He said, depart from evil and do good. Action, do good. Seek peace. It starts with your thought. Seek peace and pursue it. That's what we should do. The next scripture. He said, learn to do well. That means in my actions, I must be learning to do good. That means if I'm at this level today, by tomorrow, I should be what? Better. Amen. So we must learn to do well. Seek judgment. Relieve the oppressed. That's what we should do. We can't see people going through things and add to what they are going through. No. We relieve the oppressed. Just the fatherless. Plead for the widows. That's intercession. That's what we should do. And the last one showed us that we should do the word of God. The last verse, please. The last verse. The seed of, okay, but be ye doers of the word. And not just hear us alone. Deceiving our own selves. So when we hear the word of God, we must learn to do what the word of God says. When we do have our daily devotion, it's not just for a religious sake. We must learn to do it. Amen. And the last one, please. We'll stop here. Hallelujah. Are we blessed tonight? The seed of our thoughts. What kind of thought goes through our mind every time? What kind of thought do we allow into our hearts? Our thoughts actually produce the life we live whether directly or indirectly. Proverbs 23, verse 7. What does it say? It said, For as him he thinketh in his heart, thoughts, so is he. So we must mind the thoughts that we think. Whether we like it or not, it's producing something. It's a seed. So since we now know that we can identify these seeds, it means we can actually change or adjust what we want to see in the future. Let's stand on our feet. There's a conclusion part of this slide, and it says, can, can you give us the conclusion part, the, the conclusion part? It says, seeds are always future-oriented. Therefore, it's important to mine the seeds that we sow now. We're going to lay our hands on ourselves and say, Lord, I thank you for the grace to be fruitful. I thank you for the seed of greatness that you've placed inside of me. I want you to open your heart and begin to pray that prayer this evening. I thank you for the seed of greatness that you have placed inside me. I thank you for the seed of fruitfulness that you have placed inside of me to be fruitful in my career, to be fruitful in ministry, to be fruitful in ideas, to be fruitful in solution, to be fruitful in, 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 in everything that pertains to life and godliness. Lord, I thank you for this seed that you have placed inside of me. In the name of Jesus, thank you for this seed, oh God. Thank you for the seed. In Jesus' name we pray. And we are going to pray this prayer. I want you to look at, well, let's look at our lives personally this evening. Whatsoever is not of God, that is in our life that is not of God. Lord, this seed of anger, this seed of bitterness, this seed of disorderliness, this seed of procrastination, instead of me to do it now, I'll do it tomorrow, this seed of not having time for my spouse, this seed of always insulting my neighbors, this seed of always being self-centered, I will put it right now in the name of Jesus. So I will open our heart and pray that prayer. Whatsoever is a seed that we must have identified that is not of God, I will put now in the name of Jesus. This seed of lust, producing loss in my mind this seed of destruction producing destruction in my mind in the name of Jesus I approach you in the name of Jesus this seed that causes me to go forward and backward no this is none of you I change it from today I approach you out of my life can we open our heart and pray that prayer this evening Lord I uproot this seed that is none of you out of my heart Let's pray for our families. This seed of anger and rancor in the family atmosphere, I uproot in the name of Jesus. This seed that is making the husband and the wife not to connect the siblings to just mind their business, I uproot in the name of Jesus. 
Bakosaya da mande ke bosi ada bahastes. Rato kosi telu konste predikati ana desa da bahastes. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. In Jesus' name we pray. And last day we're going to pray this with all of our hearts. We saw in the book of Proverbs that life and death is in the power of the tongue. Let's begin to create those seeds inside of our spirits right now. Let's open our heart and begin to pray. I decree the seed of fruitfulness to begin to manifest. I decree the seed of temperance. I decree the fruit of temperance. I decree the fruit of fruitful ideas in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I decree the fruit of love to begin to manifest in my life. Only love, only love, only love. No bitterness, no hatred, no anger, no self-centeredness. Only love. Katushi tali branasi na mande. Kapasi adele kuse tali atatosha. Raba kusha na mande gebosha. And as a believer, I produce fruits of righteousness. I produce fruit of righteousness unto the Father's glory. Ika patusha na ne kusi. Redo kusha na mande gebosha. Minde kusi. My family is blessed. My siblings are blessed. My ministry is blessed. My life is blessed. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Can we lift up our hands to heaven? And the creator say with me, say, Lord Jesus, from today, I choose to be fruitful. In soul winning, I choose to be fruitful. In the name of Jesus, you've given me that ability and therefore I'll be fruitful. In my business, I'll be fruitful. As a father, I'll be fruitful. As a mother, I'll be fruitful. As a sibling, I'll be fruitful. Can we open our hearts and pray that prayer tonight? And decree and say, I'll be fruitful as a sibling. I'll be fruitful as a father. I'll be fruitful as a businessman. I'll be fruitful as a businesswoman in the name of Jesus. Everything I touch will be blessed. In Jesus' name we are prayed. And so, Father, Lord, we thank you. We thank you for your grace of fruitfulness. And on every side, we are producing fruits. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Can we put our hands together for Jesus Christ? If you have been blessed.